So in first part of this today's lecture, I will talk about DMA, uh, which is uh, used to provide direct access to memory while the microprocessor is temporarily disabled for accessing the bus. We'll explain uh, how the memory and uh, I/O system work through the DMA control. Uh, we probably don't have time to cover all these different uh, devices. The focus of the first part of the lecture is to um, talk about what is the DMA transfer, and we're going to explain the operation of the uh, control signals from the DMA controller. Um, we'll just uh, briefly talk about the DMA controller, uh, a particular DMA controller, 8237. So we we've seen this uh, actually in the first uh, quiz. There are two signals we need to use to request and acknowledge a DMA direct memory access. One of them is the hold signal. Uh, it is an uh, input to the microprocessor and it is used by the peripheral devices, uh, in fact the DMA controller, to request the DMA action. The other signal is an output signal coming out of the processor, this hold acknowledgement. This is to acknowledge the DMA transaction. And in, in a, this picture here, we show the timing diagram um, of this DMA action. What we see here is the clock signal together with these other two control signals, hold and hold acknowledgement. This hold signal is sampled in any clocking cycle. When the microprocessor recognizes this hold signal, which essentially when the microprocessor sees this signal is asserted, it will stop executing software and enters hold cycle. For the priority, uh, this hold input actually has a very high priority. It's higher than interrupt or the uh, NAND mask will interrupt. The only pin that has even higher priority is the reset pin. So which means that whenever the microprocessor sees this hold signal is asserted, no matter what it does right now, it's going to stop and try to respond to this signal. Now this is done by the hardware, by the microcontroller itself. The microprocessor will use the hold acknowledgement pin to indicate that the processor has placed its bus at high impedance state. And we talked about this several times. Uh, the re reason that the microprocessor will need to put its bus in high impedance state is because it wants to isolate itself from the bus. Because the DMA controller will later control the whole bus. It's going to send out control signals and addresses on the bus. And during that time, the microprocessor itself should uh, not interfere with this DMA operation. We can see in the earlier diagram there are a few clock cycles between the time that hold changes until the hold acknowledgement is asserted. As we see here, the hold is asserted uh, in the first clock cycle. And at this point, the microprocessor actually is trying to do its internal state machine to uh, respond to this hold signal. And some number of cycles later, here hold acknowledgement is asserted. This is the output from the microprocessor. Hold acknowledgement is a signal used to uh, notify the requesting device that the processor has relinquished control of its memory in I.O. space, memory or I.O. buses. So we can call hold as a DMA request and hold acknowledgement as a DMA grant signal. 
Some basic definitions. DMA normally occurs between an I.O. device and a memory, uh, and that is without the use of microprocessor. We refer the DMA read as the data transfer from the memory to the I.O. device. On the other hand, a DMA write is to transfer from the I.O. device to memory. And it, during the DMA action, <coughs> memory and I.O. devices are controlled simultaneously. And that is why the system usually contains separate memory and I.O. control signals. Um, DMA read will cause memory read control and I.O. write control um, to activate simultaneously. This is to transfer data from memory to I.O. device. Okay. This is the read from memory and this is writing to the I.O. device. Um, on the other hand, DMA write will cause memory write control asserted and I.O. read control asserted. And because all these are active low, we say asserted will actually mean that these um, control signals are zeros. Um, in the next diagram, this simple circuit, uh, this is actually a multiplexer, two to one multiplexer. What this chip does is to select either A side or B side. And we have four inputs and uh, on the A side and four inputs on the B side. And depending on the control signal A bar slash B, so if this, this is zero, what we expect to see is um, when this is zero, that's uh, I.O. That's actually A side. Okay. So we're going to use this is going to be a I.O. read control. Okay. And this, this I.O. read comes from the write slash read. Okay, this is going to the A side. And the opposite of that going to the second input of A side, which goes to the I.O. write control. So we can do either read or write. Similarly, uh, when we choose A side for 3 and 4, because both of them are tied to VCC, so that's one. So we have one here and one here. And if this is one, then we're going to uh, use the B side of the input signals. Now, the DMA transfer is determined by the speed is determined by the speed of the memory device or the DMA controller, whichever is the slower one. For example, if the memory speed is 50 nanosecond, the DMA transfer occurs at a rate up to 1 over 50 nanosecond, that is 20 megabytes per second. Okay. Assuming the uh, transfer size is bytes at a time. If the DMA controller itself runs at 15 megahertz, um, then the maximum transfer rate is 15 megahertz because the DMA controller is slower. It is the DMA controller that does the um, clocking to push data uh, over the bus. So the frequency of the DMA controller itself is also a limiting factor. Uh, in many cases that the DMA controller slows the speed of the system when transfer occurs. That's as compared to uh, other type of transfer methods. For example, um, zero PCI Express bus, we talked about this before. Uh, it runs a very high clock rate, even though it's doing the zero transfer. Um, also for a SATA device, uh, 
which is typically used in hard drives, um, and the transfer rate could reach to uh, 300 megabits per second. And for the PCI Express uh, connection, you can reach up to 20 gigabits per second. The DMA transfer is um, done by a chip, which is called the DMA controller. So it itself is a smaller type of uh, controller that you can program or you can write to its own control registers to um, tell the controller that what kind of operation it has to do. And this 8237 is a typical DMA controller. Um, it supplies memory and I.O. devices with control signals and addresses. So it itself is actually a special purpose microprocessor and its own job is to do high-speed data transfer between memory and I.O. Um, the next figure shows the pinout and a block diagram. Um, it's not very clear uh, on the projector here. Uh, but as you can see, this is itself a standalone IC chip. And internally, it has a timing control module, um, encoders. Um, also, it has um, pens to generate the address. And also, it has data bus. And this data bus is primarily used to control the, to program the DMA controller itself. <coughs> For those of you who uh, spend time working uh, on the serial um, controller in lab two, if you're using those uh, in and out method to access the controller, uh, you know uh, this type of controllers themselves have certain address mapped to them. So the way you access them, for example, the power port, the way you access, access them from a computer is to use its I.O. address. And that's the same for this DMA controller. So if you want to access the registers inside this DMA controller, you still need to know what is the I.O. address mapped to this controller. And then you can send uh, commands to read and write uh, this controller itself. Now, physically, in modern computer systems, this chip is often built into uh, the chipset, system controller chipset. You heard the term a lot. Uh, Intel has new processors and new chipsets uh, coming out. The chipset is the um, aggregation of different controller chips all together to one single chip. And that's uh, sitting together with the microprocessor on the motherboard. This 8237 is a four-channel device uh, compatible with uh, earlier systems. Uh, it can expand to uh, a large number of DME channel inputs. Uh, the speed of this particular chip is uh, pretty um, slow, 1.6 megabytes per second only. Um, I think that's all I would like to talk about DMA. Uh, to just give you a little bit of detail about um, how the microprocessor responds to DMA requests and how the processor uh, handles these um, DMA requests and responds to these DMA requests. The next thing I want to talk about is the 